Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is The Best Damn ADC, and today I have a very special video for you because I am so, so, so pumped about this. I was excited about it when it was announced, I was excited when they dropped last week or the week before, and I was excited when it came last Friday, and now here I am. I was not going to make a video about this, I bought this for my own personal use and just had no plans to make a video, but after spending several days with it, I felt like I had to say something about it because I've seen some people talk about it and and complain. I don't necessarily agree with all those complaints. I don't necessarily think it's the greatest thing ever, but I'm talking about the Leatherman Free P4. I know you've seen it. I know you've seen videos on it, but I also felt like I should give my take on it and whether it's something that stacks up against the Leatherman Wave, whether you should buy it over the Leatherman Wave, whether I am going to carry it over the Leatherman Wave, the tried and true, the trusty old Leatherman Wave. I've had many of them. I've used the crap out of a lot of them, but is the Free P4 worth it? That's what this video is about, and with that said, let's do the damn thing. So here we are with what is considered one of the best EDC multi-tools out there. It's big, it's bulky, it's heavy, it's probably honestly a little too much for most people. But the Leatherman Wave is somewhat of a staple and it's something that a lot of people EDC. It's something that even if you don't EDC it, it's something you've probably got in your collection or you know somebody who does or you've seen it a million times. And the Leatherman Free P4 is I think something from Leatherman that they hope to maybe transition from the Wave to this. They want people to come to this because in all honesty it's a very similar tool it is taking what was the wave to you know greater heights the one-handed operation of the wave to the next level by making everything on the tool one-handed and i don't know that they knocked it out of the park i think they've done a really good job and i think they've done better than some people have given them credit for but they still didn't knock it out of the park and i'm, I'm going to explain why but before we do that i just want to give a little bit of a rundown between these two tools and show you some of the similarities and differences and starting with the price that is going to be the biggest limiting factor for a lot of people for this particular tool the leatherman wave now the Wave Plus, I don't have the Wave Plus. This, this is the original, as you can see, it does not have the replaceable wire cutters. But that's okay, because I was able to snag another Leatherman Wave for dirt cheap, and that's the thing. You can find a Leatherman Wave for really cheap now. You can also find the Leatherman Wave Plus for about $9,900, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. Sometimes they go on sale. You can sometimes buy them for 80 bucks. The Leatherman Free Series starts at $120, so another 20 bucks gets you to the P2, and then the P4, this one on the table, the one that is closest to the Leatherman Wave, is $139.95, so $140, 40 more dollars than the Leatherman Wave for what is effectively, at the end of the day, about the same tool. Just about. Not exactly, but very, very close. So let's talk about the Free Series by itself for a second. One thing you'll notice is that this one does not have a pocket clip. The Leatherman Wave does not come with a pocket clip either for what it's worth you have to buy that separately this one does come with a lanyard hole and so does the wave it's hidden but it is there but this one does not come with a, a pocket clip the p2 comes with a pocket clip but no lanyard hole which is it's really kind of silly at this point you're paying 140 or 120 dollars for a multi-tool that doesn't come with a very very cheap piece of metal that that's going to increase the usability for a lot of people i want a pocket clip I don't necessarily want a lanyard hole. The reason I've got this leather tied to it is because I've actually been wearing this in my holster. It fits. And in order to pull it out, I need either a clip or something in the lanyard hole. So I've been using the lanyard hole and I'm thankful for it, but give me the option. It's not gonna cost you a ton to give everybody this. So include the pocket clip by default and just throw this one in the box in case people don't want a pocket clip or just let them take it off. It's not that big of a deal. I don't know why we're paying $120 and $140 for a tool and it not coming with that option. It's just a small, simple thing that Leatherman could easily accomplish. And it's something that I think should happen, but it's probably not going to happen. The other difference between the Leatherman P2 and the P4 is the P4, you have four tools on the outside. You have your scissors, you have a saw, you have your main blade and your fully serrated blade. The P2, as the name suggests, is pretty much the same thing, but you're missing two of the tools. So this one has 21 tools, the other one has 19 tools, and what you're missing is one layer of tools, and those are the ones that you're getting 
from the outside. So you actually do get the scissors, but you do not get the saw and you do not get the fully serrated blade. So what happens is the scissors move from this position right here to here and you're losing this back layer here of tools. So you're getting a slimmer multi-tool with two tools accessed from the sides, right? That is the main difference between the P4 and the P2. Four tools on the outside, two tools on the outside, and you're getting a pocket clip versus a lanyard hole. You know, most days I'm never gonna need a fully serrated blade or a saw. So I probably would have been perfectly fine with a P2, except the other major difference that I just about forgot about, the primary blade. So on the P4, you have a straight edge, a completely plain edge, exactly what I want in a tool. I do not want a serrated blade. With the Leatherman Free P2, you get a combo edge. So you get a half serrated primary blade, which is something I don't want. And that's gonna, we're gonna come back to that. When it comes to the Leatherman Wave and the Free Series, you're getting a different body style. This is closer to maybe a surge. It's closer in length to actually the signal, which I have. You're, you're getting less real estate for tools, but in, in dimensions, it's much closer to the Leatherman signal than it is the Wave. Your length on the Leatherman Free P4 is 4.25 inches. It's the same on the P2. That's 10.78 centimeters. Your weight on the P4 is 8.6 ounces or 243.8 grams. But your P2, because it has fewer tools, is 7.6 ounces or 215.46 grams. And your primary blade on both is 2.76 inches or 7.02 centimeters. And those are both 420 HC stainless steel blades. By contrast, your Leatherman Wave is just four inches long. So it's a quarter of an inch shorter. That's 10 centimeters and it's 8.5 ounces. So it's 0.1 ounces lighter than the P4. That's also 241 grams. And your main knife on the Leatherman Wave is 2.9 inches or 7.37 centimeters. It's the same 420 HC stainless steel blade. So mainly you're getting all the same steels and a lot of the same function out of these two tools, but you are getting different dimensions. You get a slightly longer blade on your Leatherman Wave, which is gonna be negligible when it comes down to it. It's not that much of a difference. You do have a difference in blade shape. You have a clip point on the Leatherman Wave and a sheep's foot on the Free Series. And when it comes to tools available here, you have 21 tools or 19 with the P2 and 18 tools with the Wave. Again, very, very similar. So you've got your main blade on both of these. Then on the opposite side here, on the P4, you're gonna have your scissors. This one is actually a full-sized file, which I will come back to. Here you have the serrated. So I think that is the same position on this one. No, it's actually a saw on the P4. And then when you flip this over, you have your saw on this and your serrated blade here. So the configuration and the layout of the tools is a little bit different, doesn't really bother me. But one thing I do truly prefer about the P4 is that you have a difference. So with the Leatherman Wave, it looks the exact same on both sides. And that's because your main blade and your serrated have the same shape. So they stick out from the tool, whereas the saw and the file are flush. So if you're picking up your Leatherman Wave and you don't have a pocket clip on it, it's hard to know the orientation of it without just checking which tool it is there. You have to just kind of look for it. Whereas with this one, you know if that's sticking out, that's your primary blade, and then anything else is gonna be flush. Uh, you know that your scissors are behind, so your primary blade's here. I can get to my scissors right here, right? So I can know the orientation of the tool as soon as I pick it up, just because that blade is different than the other tools. That is a huge, huge plus. The other difference here, obviously, the main thing with the P4 is that all of your tools are accessible from the outside. So with this one, to get to the other tools, I have to open it up. That's not really much of a chore, but if you're doing anything one-handed, it does become a little bit cumbersome. And the other thing is you've got to use your fingernails to get these tools out. On this one, it's fine. This is a new tool. It's not seen a lot of use. And these tools are very easy to get out with my fingernail. Not a big problem, right? You have all of your tools right here, very easily accessible. Uh, and I'm not really having to dig in deep to get the tools out with my fingernails. It's not that hard. However, I have my old Leatherman Wave that I used a ton. I carried this thing for years and it has seen a lot of use as you can see here. Here's the problem. Some of these have started to rust. This side's not so bad. This side, I can't even get the tools out. I can't get any of them out. I have to use another tool to get the tools out of here. 
And to get to those, I've actually used, got to use a security Torx bit for both sides. I got to have two sets of those Torx bits to loosen this up. There we go. I got the scissors out. I, and once I get the scissors out, maybe, oh God, that I bent my nail. I bent my nail back just to get these tools out. That's part of the problem. So with the free series, they're much easier. You're not using your fingernails to get your tools out. You're actually holding the tool like this and pushing away from you and getting the tools open. Very, very easy to select your tool, whichever one you want, close it up. I think that is a very, very nice advantage. That's the whole point of the P4 is getting those tools faster one-handed. And I think it works very, very well. And some people were saying that it wasn't working as well for them as it was in demonstrations. Sure, I think some of the Leatherman people who are who are showing these off at like SHOT Show, they've been using these for a long time. They've, they've gotten used to them and how it works. And it took me just a few days to really get used to how it works. Sometimes they hang, that's fine. It's gonna happen. You're gonna get grit and grime in there and they're gonna hang, but it's still usable with one hand. And I think that's a really, really great thing. So let's talk about the tools that you get and the, what are different between the Wave and the Free Series. You have a can opener with a wire splitter right here. You have an interchangeable bit screwdriver right here, which works with the, uh, the bit kit from Leatherman. You have a small set of scissors. You have a very small screwdriver with an interchangeable bit that's for like working on eyeglasses. I use this a lot actually, probably more than most of the other tools in here. You have a flathead pry tool and that is your the extent of your tools inside the wave. On the Leatherman Free P4, you have a can opener and all with a tiny screwdriver, a ruler with a wire splitter right there, or a wire stripper rather, and a larger screwdriver here, a small flat head right there. So you've got really small, medium, large is technically, I think how they're calling it. You have also a wood and metal file. You have a larger flathead screwdriver as well as a pry tool and a flathead with a bottle opener on it. But the, really my main complaint when it comes to the P4 is the stock that they're using. So you're not getting your interchangeable bit screwdriver here. I've got a problem with, I think flathead and Phillips is fine but you can't use Torx bits or Allen bits or any of the other bits if you want to. That's a problem for some people, not necessarily for me, but what I'm really more concerned about with these tools is actually the thickness, the stock used to make these tools. So some of them are actually thinner than the old Leatherman Wave tools, and it's kind of hard to see. Gotta look closely. I've spent a lot of time looking at this, but let's just compare it to this flathead right here versus the actual main screwdriver on this side, the file, which doubles as the screwdriver. This one is made out of thicker stock. It does taper down, but so does this one. Uh, it's just made out of thinner stock. And I'm afraid, I don't know, but I'm afraid that it's just gonna be a little weaker, which these are the tools that break. Your files and your screwdrivers, these are the tools that break on a Leatherman, and these are made with thinner stock. That's a concern for me. The other thing is the configuration of the tools. I'm not a huge fan of how some of these things have gone. So one of the tools from the outside now is scissors. I like having access to those from the outside, but the thing is with the P4, all of your tools are available from the outside. So why swap the scissors for you know one of these? One of my most used tools on all of my Leathermans is the file. And you can see just by looking at it, that's one of the most used tools on any of my Leathermans. And now I've got this tiny file that's thinner stock and just less usable. I mean, comparing this to this, it's far less usable. You have a fine diamond plate file here and a coarse file here you have a wooden metal file. And that is just very, very small area to work with. I would much rather have a full sized file on this tool than having the the scissors from the outside. And, and when it comes to that, you might be saying, oh, but you're getting bigger scissors. Sort of, but not really. So you're comparing these scissors to the scissors inside here, which yeah, they're bigger, they're beefier, sort of. They're about the same stock. You're getting very little benefit from these bigger scissors. It's not any better to grip them. It's the ergos aren't any different really. It's about the exact same, they're just thicker. They're not thicker as far as stock goes, they're just wider this way in this dimension and only at the tip. And they don't cut any better, they're 
effectively about the exact same tool, but this one is taking up one of your outside slots that would have been really, really nice to have a file there for. Honestly, I'd give up the saw, or the, actually I'd give up the fully serrated blade. I would rather have a file than the fully serrated blade and still have the scissors. But the configuration of these tools is just something that's not perfect in my mind, and that's gonna just be hard for you know Leatherman to get right. Everybody's got different preferences. It's gonna be hard to get something like that right for everyone. Those are the main differences in the Wave and the P4. I think they're both fantastic tools. I think the Wave is still a better value. You're getting about the same tool for $40 cheaper, and they have updated this to have your replaceable wire cutter. So the Wave Plus is better than this tool I have marginally, but it is better. And really when it comes down to it, they're very, very similar tools but you're paying $40 more to have access to these tools, which may not suit your needs any better than the Wave, just being able to access them from the outside. Personally, that is a huge selling point for me. I am all for one-handed accessibility. If I can get to a tool faster, good. If I can get to it with one hand while I'm doing something else or holding something with this hand, perfect. That is why this tool exists. I love that. But not everybody's gonna need that. And so the real question at the end of the day, is do I recommend the Leatherman Free P4 or the P2 over the Leatherman Wave? And I can't say yes. Obviously it's not gonna be a blanket yes for everybody because everybody has different needs, but I wanted to list out a few pros and cons of, of the P4 uh, over the Leatherman Wave. And first is the totally one-handed operation. That's why Leatherman made this tool. That's why it exists. It's very easy to use one-handed and it's very easy to open and close one-handed. Um, if you're talking pliers alone, you can easily use your access, your four tools from the outside, but with the Leatherman Wave, you can also do the same thing. It's a little tougher, but you can do it. You can flick this thing open and use it one-handed. And if you're really, really good, you can actually get to these tools one-handed. I'm not that good. I think if you need one-handed use, Leatherman Free P4, absolutely, it's worth it. The other thing is the narrower form factor. I like that because the Leatherman Wave was actually too big to fit in some of the organizers. It fits in here, but it's too short. Um, and I could put a lanyard on there and it would work, but it doesn't fit in some other organizers that I use, but this one just fits perfectly. It's the right length, it's the right height. In the yellow birch, which I also carry, the Wave is just, it's not a good fit. It's chunky. It wants to stretch these pockets and it's hard to get out just because it's so much shorter. The P4 slides in there much easier. It's just a better fit. Another big thing for me is the removal of the security Torx screws. These are just normal Torx screws finally. T8 Torx screws, whereas the Leatherman Wave, if you wanted to work on this, you had to go buy security Torx bits and you would have to have two sets of them because you have to be able to torque them from both sides at the same time. You don't have to do that anymore. It's just normal Torx screws. Hallelujah, thank you Leatherman. It, people were gonna modify and work on this thing themselves anyway. So using the security torque screws was a waste of time and effort. Thank you. The other problem, the other big thing is the way that this locks into place. These snap and click. There is a, a way that these could wear out easily. This could bend and it could not lock in like it should. And these might wear out over time. I don't know. I think with use, anything is gonna wear out over time. But when it came to the Leatherman Wave, there was a very common problem with these. And I don't know what you call it, loose hinge, loose wave. It's, it's, I don't know, but look at this. This became unusable. You can fix it by hammering this little flange right here down and it will tighten these back up. But look at that, these are completely unusable. If I wanted to use these one-handed, I couldn't. And this happened to two Leatherman Waves that I had where this one side would just get really, really loose and tightening down these pivots would not change that. It would just still be loose. You have to actually take a hammer and beat this down or send it to Leatherman to have it fixed. Fortunately, this is a newer one and it's not happened to this one yet. Uh, so that's fine, but I think this has a lower chance of failure. It could still fail, sure, but I think it has a lower chance of failure. I could be wrong, but for now, I think that's a pro. All right, as far as cons go, this is the first run of the first generation and there are going to be problems with it. Some people were claiming that it was a problem with the tools flying out when you closed or opened rather your free P4, P2. And that's because the tools on the inside here, when you have the pliers deployed, are held in by magnets and tension from these, these four Torx screws here. I had that problem at first and I can still force it. I can force that problem 
but I have to deliberately squeeze these open or closed, whatever, I have to make sure that these lock into place and squeeze it extra hard. You can avoid that happening by just gently opening. You don't have to flick it open and slam these. You can just gently do it and they're not gonna fly out. But you can also take two T8 Torx bits and tighten these down just a little bit and fine tune the tension here and that's not gonna happen anymore. You are still gonna have issues. It's a first run, it's the first generation of a brand new tool of a brand new series from Leatherman and with any first generation of any product, you're just gonna have problems that will get ironed out with time. That's just how it is. I came from a technology background. Every first generation of anything was always way, way worse than the second. So in a year, two years, three years, whenever Leatherman decides to really fix any of the problems with this is probably when you should jump on it if you were fairly satisfied with your current Leatherman or multi-tool. The other thing is the price, 40 more dollars for what is effectively the same tool. The only thing really different here is you're getting two more tiny tools in here and I don't really think that truly matters when it comes down to it. Most people aren't gonna nitpick over the, the tiny tools, the smaller tools that are inside. And plus they're really grasping at straws to pump that number up a little bit. Like for the listing on this, they are calling this same exact piece here inside your pliers, premium replaceable wire cutters and then premium replaceable hard wire cutters. Really, when it comes down to it, that's the same tool. You're just using different parts of it for different things. It's, they're really trying to pump that number up a little bit. When it comes down to it, 40 more dollars for the free P4 over the Wave Plus. Really, I think it's not truly totally justified. I think the P2 probably should have come in around the Wave price and the P4 maybe at 120. Your stock thickness of the multiple tools here, the screwdriver and the, the flathead on this side are great because they're really, really thick. They're as thick as the interchangeable bits, but your, your tools on this side are really thin. And I think those are gonna be the first things to break. Time and again, you're probably not gonna break a can opener, um, but if you start wrenching on this and trying to push that all through something, you're probably gonna snap that. I can actually bend this one. I don't wanna break it, but I can actually bend this one with my hand. You can see that, right? I can bend this tool with my hand. That's probably why it was sticking earlier. That's a very thin tool, especially to be an awl. The, the ruler and the file really aren't any thicker than that. No interchangeable bits is another thing. So like I mentioned earlier, really with this, you're getting a couple different sizes of flatheads and one Phillips head, and that's it. And with your Leatherman Wave, you have this interchangeable bit that works with the bit kit from Leatherman. Why would Leatherman not want to introduce this and sell more bit kits? They've completely cut that accessory out for the P4, which I think is ridiculous. They probably did it for, for space savings, but I'd rather have just one interchangeable bit holder right here, this right there, instead of just that. I don't even own the bit kit and I'm kind of upset about it not being compatible with the bit kit, but also one of the most used things for me, like I mentioned earlier, was the tiny, tiny screwdrivers. There's a Phillips head and a flat head. This is what I always tighten down my sunglasses with because they ultimately always become loose over time just with use. And I would always use this to fix those and other little itty bitty screwdriver things. That's not gonna happen on here. That's just not available. I could maybe, maybe make the small screwdriver on the end of the all work, maybe, but I don't know, that's might work, but maybe, I don't know. That's a tool that I'm gonna miss on the P4. The other con for me is the prioritization and the location of the tools. So I like that they've made the primary blade easier to index and so you can find the orientation of the thing much easier. Uh, whereas this one looks the same on both sides, but I, I would rather have, you know, a full sized file than these slightly larger scissors, which I honestly, when it comes down to it, I don't think they work quite as well as the others. Just that spring isn't, it doesn't seem as springy. I don't know. I think the prioritization of the tools, it's just not quite right for me. And then it comes down to the final con is the limited options. Like why would you offer the P2 with a half serrated blade, but not offer it with a full plain edge blade. Like I would, I think I probably would have gone with the P2 rather than the P4 if the P2 came with a plain edge. If they offered it in a combo blade and a plain edge, they easily could. It's the exact same blade on both knives, but one's a combo edge and one's not. And not offering that is 
nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's so, so close, but why? Just offer it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not hard to do. Offer it or offer the Leatherman Free P4 with a pocket clip. Just do it. It's not hard. Make it happen. Jesus. Try not to get upset over this, but it's so close. Both of them are so close. All right, and the final thing I wanna talk about, and this is something that uh, really frustrated me when the knife came in. I fixed it now. It only took a couple of minutes on, on a sharpener that I used, but this knife, the edge on this was gnarly when it came in. There were four chips in the actual edge. It was dull, it wouldn't cut paper, and it took me just a couple of minutes to, to fix it, but man, it looked used. It looked beat up. This blade looked beat up when the Leatherman came in, and I was, I mean, obviously it didn't take me much effort or time to fix it, but like something that I'm spending $140 on, I really would like to see it come with attention to detail and care. This thing came beat up. I love Leatherman. I am borderline Leatherman fanboy. But when this tool came in, I was really not happy with it. So I think there's some stuff that Leatherman needs to work on here. Definitely quality control especially when it comes to just things like that factory edge and the tension here. But when it comes down to it, I really like this Leatherman and it may be my favorite Leatherman to date. I don't think it's necessarily the best Leatherman because I think they could do better. I think they need to offer this with the P2 with a, a plain edge and the P4 with a pocket clip. Those are small, small things that would make a lot more people happy and I would be completely, totally satisfied. Please just make it possible, come on. I love you, Leatherman. I really, really love you, Leatherman, but so close. So close. That is going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful and you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. If you would like to purchase anything you saw in this video, including the Leatherman Free P4, the P2, which I don't necessarily have, the Leatherman Wave or any of the other Leatherman tools, they're all linked down below. Those are affiliate links. So if you purchase those, it gives me a little bit of a kickback, helps support what I'm doing here and it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's the ultimate win-win for all of us. So go ahead and click those links and purchase stuff if you want to or if you want to support in another way you can go to patreon.com forward slash best mdc and pledge every single month there also be sure to follow us around the web you can find us on twitter and instagram at best mdc you can find me taylor martin on twitter and instagram at casper tech and until next time carry on